Uh, hiya, uh, I was just looking at a, an old photo album there when the BB went to Berlin in East and West Germany. Th this isn't it though, this is just an empty photo album. Right. I'm Kelvin Crotch, uh, this is my third video blog. Um, I'm calling it Video Blog 3. And I've, again, I've used a different director this time. His name's Hamish. When uh, when are these girls coming, Kelvin? They'll be here shortly. Well, you said they'll be here now. Um, time difference. What happened the last time? The last time they were late as well, but they, they did show up. Right. Definitely, they definitely did show up. I right. remember it. Right. They didn't make the final cut, but they did show up. BB leader took us to Germany to teach us about his political leanings. It was one of the best few days I've ever had in one of the worst cities in the world. Uh, we got to see the Berlin Wall. I cannot believe they let that wall divide the city for years. It is tiny. The wall, not the city. Is that a dinosaur? The size of that goat? Uh, we met up with the, these young German BB groups at a convention in Berlin. Did you know that German BBs are known as the Hitler Youth? I certainly didn't. Uh, our leader told us that when we got to the convention. To be honest, the, the convention was really boring. It's probably because I don't speak Germanish, but I did notice that it was a beautiful and passionate language. Um, the, the BB leader told us that, he sort of interpreted it for us. He told us that the main message that was that we should um, try and look the same and that I was really, really, really lucky that it was summer and my hair was more blonde and strawberry and my navy blue eyes didn't look too dark. But I don't believe in luck, just like I don't believe in astronomy. We also went to the Reichstag, an area in Berlin that's becoming increasingly popular with stag and hen parties, hence the name. Uh, BB leader got very emotional saying it was like his mecca. I never even knew he played bingo. Going to the Reichstag for me was like a German coming to Glasgow and going to see the city chambers, home of the fascist Glasgow City Council where the evil Stephen Purcell reigns. I don't mean he's evil because he's gay. I mean he's evil because he lives in Yoker. And because he masturbates in public toilets. There are so many similarities between the Nazi regime and Glasgow, it's unreal. The Nazis had gas chambers, Glasgow's got the gas works. And I've not got any proof that there's any connection between these two. It's just that I don't think there are any Jews in Glasgow. I mean, I've not seen a single hook nose in years. I don't think they've been gassed though. I mean, you just couldn't get away with that in this day and age. Mainly due to the cost of gas. It'd be far too expensive. <laughs> Dam busters. Dam buster. Where's the dam busters <laughs> We've also got Glasgow eating into other areas like Paisley and Brayhead, much the same way that Germany did in 1938. In fact, I'm surprised there isn't a gas works in Fergusley Park, because that would be the ideal place to eliminate physically and intellectually disabled people. There's enough of them there anyway. Thank God the word appeasement isn't in David Cameron's vocabulary. Thank the God Jesus. Right, so you've got Germany, Glasgow, don't forget my G, both got six letters, see where I'm going with this. Get Paisley, Poland, both begin with P. Poland's got P O L A N. Six letters, Paisley's got P A S L Y. I'll give you a specky bastard. Three That soldier looks a bit mad. Specky, where are you going? Go. Are you filming? Speaking about David Cameron, I was out campaigning for my beloved Conservative Party at the recent by-elections. Campaigning in East End was incredibly depressing. 
doing door to door in the shelves, it was so risky. I felt like Princess Di when she went to soup kitchens in Bosnia and that. Knowing that you're a million times better than these people, but trying your best to look humble and interested in what they've got to say. It's bloody hard. That's off to Princess Di though, she made it look easy. There was a lot of hostility towards the Conservative Party in the East End. I mean, somebody really should have told me about this before before I started my election hearing. And I only really became aware of the problem um, when I'd been spat in the face about half a dozen times. And it's, it's not nice getting spat in the face at the best of times. But when you're getting spat in the face with somebody that's got morbid halitosis, it's a million times worse. It's indescribable. It's like you're swimming through the Clyde. Right after a homeless guy's just defecated in it. And then died in it. And his corpse has been in there for two weeks. You get the picture. It's grim. I've been looking for this. I suppose some good things did come for the by-election. We're now the third best party in Glasgow East. That's one better than last time. And I suppose the real winner is David Cameron. Because at Westminster, nobody really cares about the SNP. On the other hand though, it doesn't really feel that good getting annihilated by the political wing of the Tartan Army. I'm a big fan of our electoral system. Everybody gets a say in who gets to run the country. On paper, it's a brilliant system. But in the East End of Glasgow, every time the party that I want to get in, they don't. So it can't be that good a system. Guess it's what happens when you let people who are only that clever have the vote. Maybe people who have higher IQ should get two votes to help balance it out a bit. I mean, but for the SNP to win, I'm speechless. I put it down to the Braveheart factor. Braveheart comes out, 13 years later, bam, the SNP, they start winning safe Labour seats. I would never give money to a homeless person that was clean shaven. Have you seen the price of razor blades these days? No beard, no pennies for me. And that goes for women too.